Alright, so a ball is thrown straight up at 10 meters per second. How high will it go above the release point? How high will it, uh, how long will it take to get back to the release point? This is a kinematics problem. I mean, we've got uh, like a velocity, something about a distance, something about a time. Sounds like kinematics. So let's approach it that way. First, I'm going to draw a picture. Okay, so here we have a uh, person throwing an object up into the air. And what's going to happen is it's going to go up to some maximum height here. And then it's going to fall back down, and it eventually it'll be right back at the same height it started from here. Okay, so we mentioned the kinematics problem. May as well just list out the kinematics equations. I mainly use three of them. You may know others, in which case go ahead and use them. Alright. So what we want to do is list out all the players in a kinematics equation. X, X initial, V, V initial, A, and T, and figure out which ones we know. That'll help us select the proper equation. So for part A, well for both parts, we know it was thrown up at 10 meters per second. That's going to be our initial velocity. Oops. All right, that's going to be our initial velocity. So we do know that. And in part A, we're wondering how high it'll go above the release point. Well, that'll be our X final. And if we call the release point a height of zero, it should make it in math a lot easier. It should cancel some things out. And we're allowed to choose where zero is. A lot of power in this. Now, in doing that, I should also mention that up is going to be my positive x direction. So I decided to, I decided to call the positive direction up. Okay, and that's what most people would want to do, but it's important that we keep it in mind because it changes some things, um, or it can change some things. So V initial would be right here in the positive direction, see, pointing up. And so it looks like we were correct to call it a positive 10 meters per second. Now, in the end, it'll have some velocity pointing down. I don't think we're looking for that, but if we were to find it, it would be a negative velocity, and that's okay. Just means it's pointing, you know, in the negative direction. All right, so back to part A. We were looking for x final, and we know the acceleration. In this case, the acceleration is going to be negative g. All right, that's 9.8, but it's negative because gravity always points down. We called up the positive direction, so down is the negative direction. So in this case, and in most cases when you set up your problem uh, with gravity, the acceleration will be negative 9.8. All right, so I'm looking at this, and I have got one, two, three unknowns. That means I cannot solve this. Yeah, you may be aware that you need um, uh, yeah three unknowns and I th and three knowns. You may be aware that you need four. You need to f know four things before the kinematics can do anything for you. Uh, so I know I'm looking for x. I must be able to figure out v final or t. So in this case, the final position is all the way up here. And the trick to solving this is you have to realize. For just a split second up here, the final velocity is zero. All right? So something is traveling upward, getting higher and higher and higher. It slows down, and then it starts coming downward. The velocity must have been zero for a second, right? It was positive velocity, and then it was negative velocity. And just normal reasoning means the velocity must have been zero between those two points, and it was right at the height of a throw. Uh, velocity of a projectile is zero, at least the vertical velocity. 
So we actually have a v final of zero. So now I have one, two, three, four knowns and two unknowns. That means I can pick a kinematics equation that will solve this for me. So the trick to picking out a kinematics equation for me is to look at the one I don't care about. I know I'm, I know I know these four in the middle. I'm looking for x final. The equation had better contain all that stuff then, but it doesn't need to contain t because I know I just don't care about it right now. In that case, it looks like it's going to be the the bottom equation. v squared equals v initial squared plus two a delta x. And let's start plugging things in. Um, first of all, delta x I can rewrite as x final minus x initial. Delta something is also, as always, final minus initial. So there's that. And I know that the initial was 0, so that'll be a 0. That gets rid of the x initial. I know that v final will be a 0. That'll be a 0 there. And uh, I know that a is negative g, like that. I also know v initial is 10, but I prefer to wait to plug in numbers till the very end. So right now I have 0 equals v initial squared minus 2gx. Okay, the minus sign comes out in front from the negative g. So if we rearrange this, v initial squared equals 2gx, or x equals v initial squared divided by 2g. And so that is our answer to part A. So part B, how long will it take to get back to the release point? So in this case, the initial is still the throw, but the final is all the way back down at the hand again. And we're wondering how long it's going to take. All right. So now our picture is still good, but we kind of need to start over because we have a different initial and or same initial, but we have a different moment that we're calling final. So the variables I named aren't really going to be good anymore, some of them. So let's go and pick some, some new ones. So for part B, we have, uh, we're going to need to know x, x initial, v, v initial, a and t. So x, well, let's call that x initial 0 again. That worked out nicely last time. Um, but look at the picture here. It starts here and it ends there. So x final is also going to be 0. It came back, right? We still have the same initial velocity though of 10 meters per second. Like that. And we don't really know what the final velocity will be. Acceleration is still that negative g. You know, if you're on Earth, you can't do much more about that. It's ne We call it negative because we said up is the positive direction. We'll still go with that convention. So look, I've got my four knowns. I should be able to solve for either of these unknowns, but the time is what I'm interested in. So picking out a kinematics equation, again, we want the one that does not have this does not have v final because I don't care about it. I know these four, I need to know these four, and I'm looking for t. I don't care about v final. So let's look up here. It looks like our answer is going to be this messy one in the middle. I'm going to use x equals x initial plus v initial t plus one half a t squared. All right, we need to see what zeroes out, and we need to solve for t. Now, I often get, become a little concerned when I get this equation, because, look, t is in it twice, and once it's squared, sometimes this requires the quadratic formula, but I bet it won't in this case. Oftentimes, things zero out. Let's see, x final is zero, x initial is zero, that's good. And so we'll also plug in the a equals negative g, and I get 0 equals the initial t plus, oh, sorry, minus 1 half g t squared, plugging that in. All right. And if you look at this, 
uh, this can be factored like so. 0 equals t v initial minus 1 half g t. I can pull out a t, and if you remember your algebra, we don't want to just get rid of that t, um, really, because that would, uh, that's a solution. So we could have t equals 0, or v initial minus 1 half g t equals 0. Okay, so that is, in order to make this t times this parentheses equal to 0, either the t could be 0, or the whole thing could be 0. Alright, so I wrote both of those down. So here's a possible answer when the time is 0. Let's see if that makes, if that's true or if that makes any sense. So we said that the initial velocity was, you know, we had this initial velocity, the uh, initial position is 0, and then the final position is also 0. So what this t equals 0 is telling me is the initial position is equal to the final position at the instant you throw it. So right in his little hand there, right when he throws it, the, uh, if you go from that moment to a moment instantly afterwards, zero amount of time would have passed, and it will still be down in his hand, basically, in his paw. So that is a boring solution. That is obvious. So of course, at the time of zero, basically right as he throws it, it'll still be down in his hand. That's boring. Um, the problem was asking, anyways, how long it will take to get back to the release point. So that wouldn't really be the right answer. We know it's going to be more than zero seconds. It's got to go up, come back down. So let's see what this other equation can give us. Uh, if I rearrange this, uh, let's say 1 half gt equals b initial, we'll get t equals um, 2 b initial divided by g. All right. And so that should be our answer. I see it is going to be positive 2 times 10 divided by positive 9.8 will give us oh, 2.1 or something like that seconds. And that sounds like a reasonable amount of time for something to be in, an, in the air. Um, for a person, I've never seen a cat throw a mouse directly into the air, but that'd be neat. All right, so this was a nice little one-dimensional kinematics example. One of the simplest ones you can get. And we'll find a few other interesting ways to solve this problem in the future. In the meantime, it's definitely kinematics. You list out your equations. You list out your knowns and unknowns. You see which equation will solve it for you, and you plug in. Um, as you say, I didn't actually plug in any numbers. I don't like doing that. You can. All right, thanks.